Welcome to the GCN Show. From somewhere where yesterday was minus 40, welcome to the GCN Show. Skinny tires too. Welcome to the GCN! <laughs> Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up, your chance to change the way that professional cycling is televised. Plus, we wrap up some important early season races in Oman, Andalusia, and the Algarve. Plus, we award two <laughs> wattage bazookas. We celebrate the career of Sven Nace. Not randomly, it's because he's retired. Plus, we've got all of our usuals, like tech, caption, and bodge of the week. Plus, even more importantly, we're on new chairs. Oh, yeah. Woohoo! They're really shiny, aren't they? Super comfy. Good posture as well. Your hair looks all right. You might have just made it, mate. Oh, sorry. It's time now for Tech of the Week. First up, I'm a little bit of a sucker for a very smart town bike. And this one that's been produced by Turn Bicycles has really blown me away. Now, it's not actually in production as yet, but there is a bit of information out there and some photos for us to get our teeth into. Yeah, that really that is, is lovely. a nice Very looking nice. bike. Now, Turn have only previously made folding bikes, but they've collaborated this time with uh, Japanese design company Kit Design to make what is a pretty solid machine indeed. Yeah. Now, for some more tech that you can't actually buy yet, mainly because it doesn't actually exist, except the fact that it looks like it exists. So, computer graphic artist Patrick Ng from Singapore has designed this bonkers looking mountain bike. Now we used to think that 29ers looked a little bit ridiculous, now they're commonplace and we think they look cool. So he has upped his game and created the 39er. Right, that is absolutely nuts. It does look mm. ridiculous. Uh, apparently though it will fit you just like any other mountain bike would do, hence the reverse stem and the very low looking bottom bracket. Uh, one thing that we do know for sure though Si, is that it will make short work of any logs. Hmm, thanks chaps. But as bonkers as that bike looks, Ng has actually created a similarly out there design before. One that included, get this, a 13 speed 1150 cassette. 1150? <laughs> 1150 apparently. Now, that might not be that strange because a well known group set manufacturer could be making that in the not too distant future. Pro cycling is stuck in the dark ages when it comes to TV coverage, apparently. But things could be changing. Yes, they could be. Uh, we should give you a bit of the backstory first. So, Velon is an association of World Tour teams who've combined together and joined forces to try and improve the financial stability of professional cycling. And they've just made a very important announcement. So, they've entered into a partnership with Infront Sports and Media. And this means that they now have access to the technology which will allow them to transmit rider data, such as heart rate, power, and speed, in real time on your TVs. So you could see Froome and Contador's heart rates as they're battling out on Alpduez in the Tour de France. And the chances are that they'll agree to it as well because the equipment needed weighs just 75 grams. Nice. Yeah, and perhaps most importantly, the UCI have agreed to include it as part of the overall bike weight. So the 6.8 kilo minimum weight limit still applies. Uh, so there's no weight penalty at all. So hopefully we'll get loads of top riders in the mountain stages. But Will this rider data thing really bring cycling into the 21st century? I mean, perhaps the question should really be, what do the fans really want? Fans like you and me, fans old and new. Actually, what do you guys think? It's cool. To me though, I think the best thing would be if we could get the best riders in the world racing in races that they really care about winning more often. So it's great at the moment, we've got all the anticipation about you know, what is X rider and Y rider gonna do when they actually meet but wouldn't it be cool if they were just racing? Head to head, yeah. I think it's going to be great. You know what I'm like, I'm a real data nerd, so the more numbers, the better for me. And I'd also like to be able to see where a particular rider is at any point during the race. So if I'm supporting someone, I want to be able to see where they are if they're not in the front group, how far behind they are, and not have to wait for 10 minutes after the race to see the result. Interesting stuff. This will soon obviously develop over the next few weeks, which is exactly what it entails. But what do you guys think? You know what to do. Leave your comments down below. Market research, GTN mm. style. Time now for Caption of the Week, and last week we had a picture of former Tour de France champion and all-round Australian good guy, Cadell Evans. Right, Dave Pratt, congratulations, you are the winner. With this caption, Cadell, I know you said you wanted to get back to your roots, but uh, isn't this too far? 
You are too good for this show, mate, aren't you? You're just <laughs> well, too like, like I say, I'm almost good. Australian, but just not. Get in touch with us on Facebook, Dave, and we shall send you out our GCN swag in the post. Well, this week we have this photograph for you of a motorcyclist and one of the Swaniers from BMC. Now, Dan's got one teed up. Yeah, Go on, Dan. It's really good. Uh, I'd switch back to your race bike, mate, before the finish, because the UCI are here with their scanners. I think I'll get my coat. I mean, the accents have been impeccable. Yeah, that's amazing. Incredible stuff. I presume you're referring to the, the motorised doping, the yeah. UCI yeah, testing I'm scanners? Sure. Yeah, no, I just okay. wanted to clarify. Uh, so if you do any high. better, I doubt it, but leave your comments and captions in the comment section below. Seemingly, most of the top riders were in action over the last week. Although, unfortunately, they were spread out over four different races. But most of the Grand Tour sprinters and overall contenders were giving it big licks, weren't they? Totally yeah, well. so over at the Tour of Oman, it was the 2014 Tour de France champion Vincenzo Nibali who took overall honours ahead of another Grand Tour GC contender, Roman Bardet. Uh, Nibali set himself up by winning the Queen stage up Green Mountain. Uh, a resurgent Ed Val Barsenhagen continued his uh, excellent form. He took two stages for Dimension Data. And Alexander Kristoff also was setting off wattage bazookas, like they were going out of fashion. Uh, he also took two stages, taking his win tally up to five already this year, just midway through Feb. Yeah, whilst over at the Volta Andalusia in Spain, there were some more Grand Tour contenders in the mix. That really was a solid field there, but it was Spanish champion Alejandro Valverde of Movistar who crushed the hopes of the opposition with a devastating display of power on the final summit finish to Peñas Blancas, toppling the race leader TJ Van Garen of BMC, who had got the jersey the previous day in the individual time trial. Now, he managed to salvage second place on the general classification, whilst Tret Sigafrego's Bolka Monoma took third. The other big showdown of the uh, week was the Volta Algarve. Team Sky's Garen Thomas took the overall win there for the second year in succession, but the stage winners was packed full of Grand Tour talent, wasn't it? Marcel Cattell continued his comeback with two stage victories. Fabian Cancellara seemingly turned back the clock and beat Tony Martin in the time trial. And then Alberto Contador also fired his guns for the first time this year to take the final stage hilltop finish ahead of Fabio Aru and also Thibaut Pinot, which is Pretty stacked field, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Seems like everybody who's anybody is already on form this year. Uh, it should be a very, very good season, I think. Now, I think uh, one tweet that did stand out amongst all the tweets was this from Fabian Cancellara. One reason why you should follow him. An absolute hoot. But look at those legs. Hashtag Spartacus 2016. Mm. <laughs> the biggest prize in pro cycling this week, though, is undoubtedly going to be the GCN Wattage Bazooka. <laughs> Some bazooka that was this week. My word. First up, it's the Pro Bazooka Award. Step forward, Bob Youngles of Etics Quick Step. Well done, Bob. Yes, well done, Bob. Now, he fitted a 55 tooth chainring to win stage one of the Tour of Oman. He attacked a select group on the last ascent of the finish. He reached speeds of over 100 kilometers per hour. He averaged over 80 kilometers per hour for the last few minutes. Not only that, he averaged 505 watts for five minutes and 38 seconds on the climb that preceded that descent. That's the first strategic bazooka we've seen. Yeah, not too shabby and a worthy winner of a very prestigious award. Absolutely. And an absolutely delighted Bob Youngles tweeted this. Just look at his face. I fitted a watch's bazooka a few years back. 54 tooth chain ring, in fact. Did you? What happened? Did you win? No. Yeah. Right, okay, perhaps more importantly though, it's the What is Bazooka awarded to you guys mm. who is going to get it. So, <clears throat> I can reveal it is Ellie Park. Congratulations, well, Ellie. Now, uh, she says, uh, I've currently got a broken elbow and a collarbone, both on my right side, and I still have managed to hold the orange polka dot and green jersey on Zwift all at one time. Now that is a lot of jerseys to hold in one yeah, hand. Well done, Andy. So fair play. That's some serious bazooka. -ing. Yeah, if you'd like to nominate somebody or even yourself for the Wattage Bazooka Prize next week, all you've got to do is let us know in the comments section down below or contact us on Facebook or Twitter. Yeah, and Ellie, get in touch and we will send you your GCN swag as a prize. And don't forget the hashtag GCN Wattage Bazooka. Or is it just Wattage yeah, Bazooka? I think it's just Wattage Bazooka. Just Wattage Bazooka with a hashtag in front of it. I don't it. think anyone else has got Wattage Bazooka, so no, we haven't added GCN at the start. I can't believe no one had taken that hashtag. It is now time for hack forward slash bodge of the week. Now, I'm officially making this first one a hack without even asking you to. 
Uh, it came in from John Waddell. He stripped down his Ortega group set and modified it to look like this. And he did so uh, by taping it up and then he keyed and airbrushed it with Airfix paint and lacquer. And that does officially look rather good. It, it looks, looks remarkably like a Duro Ace group set. Must have had a steady hand. That's what he's done. Fair good, enough. Good key in there. It is. Right, okay, this next one. Now, I think we'll wait to decide for a minute. From uh, Team Village. Saw this out on a ride, the latest Garmin. And you're right, it is the latest Garmin for cars. Mm. Uh, and then you'll have a look and see what that thing that looks like a shotgun attached to is, a shotgun cartridge attached to a seat post is. And it's an extra battery because uh, that's what it takes. So that's, I guess we say, officially a bodge. Yeah, uh, a voting bodge. Yeah. That's, and why? It's not waterproof either, is it? And it's, be and it's been snowing as well. Yeah. This one comes in from Pippa Jetcop, a stride her turbo trainer at home or possibly a friend's house, we're not sure, she didn't say. Uh, hacked, uh, hashtag GCN hacked, arm warmers recycled from a pair of old tights. Thrifty and cosy. They certainly look very cosy indeed. Hmm, not a bad bodge. I wonder how she's done it actually, yeah, good. Were you nominating that? Bodge or hack? Bodge. Uh, hack. Bodge. Hack. Bodge. Hack. Bodge. Hack. Okay, hack. come on, no one will know. Uh, right, well this one, I'm not even sure if it's a hack or a bodge, it might just be an actual bike, but it was sent in uh, by Tennyson Rice. He was walking around Japan, saw this curious thing, a two by two traction bike. I'm not sure whether I'd ever need traction at my front wheel. Maybe on a really steep, loose mountain bike climb. That's no, no, that's not a hack, it's not a bodge. It's, it's what it an is. answer to a question that didn't need to be asked, isn't it, basically? Mm. That's just, yeah. Anyway, this final one, I'll leave it with you. Yeah. It's, it's remarkable. There's, there's a lot going on. Rickshaw? Error rickshaw. Is it a crime against well, It's cycling? a race bike, he's got zip wheels in great. there. I'd sit in the back of that in a chariot. I, do you know what? That's quite a nice looking like bike it. though that's been sawn in half to make into a rickshaw. Maybe he recycled it after a written off rear triangle on that Bianchi. I hope so. Yeah, let's think about that. Mm. What an ingenious use of your damaged bicycle. Keep those bodges and hacks coming. And Lily said backs and hodges. Right, let them have to uh, oh, using all the social media platforms. Yeah. Apart from Snapchat. Hashtag Apart from Snapchat. Hack is the important bit. Instagram, we'll find Facebook, it. Twitter. Sunday officially marked the end of an era. It was the last competitive outing for cyclocross legend Sven Nais, who took part in the race in Usmala in Belgium. Now, a 25th place on the day perhaps wasn't quite what you would expect for a rider of his calibre, but have no doubt this was a lap or perhaps multiple laps of honour in front of his home crowd. Now, listing his palmares and wins would take an entire GCN show in itself. But in short, he has won the World Cup on six occasions, taking 50 individual rounds. He's won the Super Prestige on 13 occasions overall, Ooh. with 55 individual rounds. And he has won the World Championship twice. Hats off, Sven Nace. Definitely hats off. What an absolutely legendary yeah. career. Now, we should do a GCN show actually that's just listing his results. Yeah. It'd be so easy, wouldn't it? We'd just go on the media. Yeah, have we got, it'd be amazing. It'd have to be an extra long show, wouldn't it? Yeah, we'll actually. That's a good point. All right, let's not do that. Well, there we go. We're sticking with Belgium for the time being. Uh, this is something that should be on every single classics fan's wish list. Now, Quermont is one of the iconic climbs in the Tour of Flanders, but it also is the name of a boutique brewery. Now, to celebrate 100 years of the Tour of Flanders, get this, the brewery are making six limited edition Belgian beers. Now, it's for people who've won the Tour of Flanders on three occasions. Oh, I've ridden it three times. No, won it on three occasions. Oh, uh, that's right. Mate. Good, it's all right, mate. But anyway, can you name those riders? Or well, six riders who've won it on three occasions. Right, mm. here's some really cool news, uh, which has got, well, it does have a bit to do with racing. The Afghan women's cycling team has been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Wow. Yeah, how cool is that? So uh, they came to the attention of, uh, well, most of us really, when there was a great little documentary about them uh, documenting their struggles against, well, prejudice and repression and, and all sorts of things. And then there's been recent publicity in Italy, again, about the team. And so 118 Italian MPs have nominated them for the Nobel Peace Prize. So they're on the shortlist. That is pretty cool, actually. Is that amazing? That yeah. Is real. I, hope that, I hope that goes through. Fantastic stuff. Well, from a team who may win the Nobel Peace Prize to another team who almost certainly won't, and in fact could polarise opinion. Mm. So a few weeks back, I think we mentioned on the GCN show about Bjarne Rees possibly coming back into the sport with a new team to be announced sometime this week. Now, the rumours are coming thick and fast. According to Velo News, the possible collaboration in the team could come from Bahrain because this is something that the Crown Prince of Bahrain put on Instagram a few days ago. That looks especially like he's launching a team. 
I'd it does. Say. It's quite a bold statement of intent. Yeah, if he hasn't got a team, he's gonna, you know, that's a. He's gonna, he's gonna fall <laughs> yeah. flat. Yeah, basically. But hopefully, King of Bog, Prince of Bahrain, all goes well. Crown Prince. Crown Prince. Uh, after the discovery of a motor hidden in a cyclocross bike at the recent World Championships in Belgium, the Belgian Federation have said that they're going to invest €50,000 in a scanning machine of their own uh, to scan bikes starting at the forthcoming Omloop Head News plant, mm. in addition to the UCI's testing. So that's quite good news. That is pretty good Although news. I'm slightly worried that they've got a bit fleeced because I heard the UCI were just using iPads and an app so if they've been charged fifty thousand euros right, for that's an a lot of money for an app, isn't it? Yeah, I told you that. Yeah. Anyway, hopefully they haven't been stitched. But there we go. But in uh, well, some very sad news actually to end this week's cycling shorts. Now, uh, British cycling broadcaster David Duffield has sadly passed away at the age of eighty-four following a fall at the weekend. Now, I think all three of us have spent, I know, many, many, thousands of hours, in fact, listening to his dulcet tones on Eurosport. And he's one of those kind of broadcasters that could just mesmerise you and had that ability to just speak for hours and hours and hours on end. And he will be sadly missed. It's time now for Dom's Tweet of the Week. Matt, are you going to go for the first one? And uh, the first one is, as usual, a perla. This comes from JJ Lobato, the sprinter from Mobistar, who tweeted this. A Japonia la ropa di Indura. A hobongo e casco di cat like sport. Very good. Like it's it. almost attracted so much from the amazing photo there. It's, it's almost really as quite nice sweet. As, uh, your beanie there, Sam. Anyway, <laughs> Dom's second tweet of the week comes from Christopher Sherping, uh, new rider at Team Cannondale. He put, So nice to be a part of a winning team. Ready to fist myself in the front of the peloton tomorrow. <laughs> Possibly the best tweet of all time, not it, just from cyclists, but I must, from anyone in the world ever. It did I love get that. a lot of love on the internet this yeah, weekend. Brilliant. Really. Well, <laughs> Great <laughs> tweet. Possibly tweet uh, of the year right there. Yeah. Time now for comment of the week. Now, first off the bat, we have this from John McAllister, and this was posted under last week's show. You guys need to stop waking Tom up to do these shows. Let him sleep. What we have done this week is just underneath the table. Yeah. You might be able to right, hear him if you listen, if you listen intently. Uh, also under relief, last week's new show was AB53. Uh, why would Matt even act like he enjoys the twig pedal? It combines his two least favourite things, clipping in and logs. <laughs> I wasn't acting, I actually thought that was a great piece of tech right there. And at least it's safely attached to your bike. It's not like you're going to run over it and no, fall off. So, uh, you know, maybe yeah. that's why. Finally then, we've got Yong and Leung, uh, under the Marcel Kittel's Pro Bike, the Dan shot. Uh, now, Dan, I think they have a problem with your maths. Uh, this bike saves two minutes over the tarmac at 40k an hour over an hour. So, uh, this bike makes an hour 58 minutes. I will admit my logic didn't make any sense there whatsoever. I don't even know what I was trying to say. I can't even correct myself. Fair, fair play, following your sword like that, but uh, well spotted young John Leon. On the channel this week, on Wednesday, it's how to get the most out of disc brakes. The first thing you'll want to do is adjust your braking, take into account the extra power that you'll have available at your fingertips. So whilst we'll normally recommend doing most of your braking down on the drops here when you're descending, the extra power that disc brakes give you can mean that you can comfortably do it up here on the top. And on Thursday, it's our top five training hacks. Grinding to a hole to the junction or a red traffic light is a bit of a pain in the backside, but you can use it to your benefit. So try jumping away as hard as you can from a standing start, accelerating for between 10 and 15 pedal revs. We've got a very special Friday feature for you. Matt went for a ride in Flanders with the Lion of Flanders himself, Johan Musero. So we've got an exclusive interview with him. And Saturday's pro bike is the BMC Time Machine of former Olympic champion Sammy Sanchez. Sunday is off the back. And then on Monday, we tell you what tools and spares you need to pack when you go away on holiday with your bike or in a training camp. And on Tuesday, we're back on the chairs. We are. Actually, you're not here. You're away. Oh, no. I'm in filming, Taipei, some, in filming Taiwan. some cool shizzle for us. I am. I'm super excited, actually. I cannot wait to go. Yeah, I'm in Taipei at the Taipei show. Your social media is going to go through the roof. It is. Oh, imagine, the, game, imagine the um, Facebook post and the tweets and the. Um, maybe I'll even Snapchat. It's time now for Extreme Corner, and it is a pretty momentous one this week because this is video evidence of the first ever 1080 
on a mountain bike from Nikolai Rogatkin at the Masters of Dirt in Vienna with thanks to the Deaconator. Nuts, Three sideways loop the loops. And a good pile on at the end. Nice work. Well, now, if go. that stunt has whetted your appetite for more videos just like that, then you could check out the Team Sky Behind the Training Camp video just up there. And for our most common cycling mistakes that you don't want to make really, click just down here. Oh, and also make sure you click on that little one in the middle first before you go off to the other two videos. It says subscribe. Uh, that is what it enables you to do for free. Totally free. Tell your mates, don't forget to like our videos as well.